Hey, good morning, everyone. How's it going? So what am I working on now? Well, I got a 2002 Chevy Cavalier, and a customer brought it in and said the temperature gauge climbs up almost to overheat when they're sitting in traffic or they're sitting at a stop. They had it elsewhere. Some other people tried to fix it. They couldn't figure it out. Okay, no big deal. They said it runs and drives fine. Otherwise, they could be driving down a highway and never have a problem. It's only when they come to a stop. All right, sounds like cooling fans aren't working. Okay, so first things first. I get in it, I open up the hood, and I take a look. And what do I find? Brand new fans. So if you look down there, that's a brand new fan. I also found a brand new relay. Relay goes right there in that spot. So how does a relay actually work? A relay takes a high voltage side, like the fan needs high voltage to run. You're not gonna run a little teeny tiny wire to it and expect that motor to run. It's, it takes a lot of amperage. So it takes basically a high amp circuit and turns it on using a low amp or a low volt, or, yeah, a low amp circuit to turn on a high amp circuit. Makes more sense, right? Okay. So, I went with the scanner and I tried to actuate the fan. Nothing happened. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's start doing some basic diagnostics. And let me show you what I found. So real quick, I'm going to show you this. Here we have the cooling fan fuse. It's a 30 amp, pretty substantial fuse. It comes in, it splits, and it feeds both sides of the relay. This is the tripped side, meaning you have power coming in if you... I'm sorry. You have power coming in, you trip this side, it'll cause this side to pull over and latch. So this side will come over, latch to this to turn the fans on. Basically, it'll send the current down. Like a wall switch. You know, you flip a wall switch on, basically that's all it's doing. But it's controlled by this. So, quick and simple, we come over here and we are going to test. Now, with a test light, we're just going to take a test light, we're going to hook it to negative right there. So there are test light lights telling you got positive, telling you got power there. All right, so here's the relay. I got nothing here. I got nothing here. All right, I got power here. I got power here. I don't know if you couldn't see that, maybe. I got nothing. I got nothing. Okay, so I got power, power. So that right there tells me that this circuit here is good up to the relay. So now let's flip this around. Let's go to negative. All right, so now on the negative side, see, it's working. I mean, on the positive side, I'm sorry, I was on negative, now I'm on positive. So now on positive side, the test light shouldn't light, okay? Because I'm already on the positive side, so it's not going to light because it's not going anywhere. But now, if I go here, this is this side here. Which is which, I don't know yet. But if I'm going here, I should see it light up or whatever accordingly. So if this circuit is good, I should see ground because the ground is here, it goes through, the motor comes up. I should have ground here. So I have nothing here. I have ground here. Hmm. Nothing. Ground. So, what does that tell me? I already know that that is this circuit here. Let's just take a jumper. We can go from either side, it doesn't matter because they're both tied in. Technically, it's this terminal here jumps to that terminal here, it crisscrosses. But now, as I jump, Pay, to, pay close attention and watch this. See how much that sparks? It tells you it's a high amp. But there we go. The fan turns on. All right, all right. So now I got my scanner here. I have nothing here, right? Let's turn the fan control on. See, now it's on. I still got nothing. Hmm, okay. Let's turn it off. Now, what I did do, what controls this? This goes right back to the PCM. Circuit, it's circuit 335, pin 43. I already back probed the, the pin itself. I'm not piercing the wire. I'm actually going to the back side of the connector. So let me put this in there. I need two hands to do this, but let me put this in there just so it's, it's uh, hooked into the alligator clip. 
All right, so there you see it's hooked in. Let's come back here and let's turn this on. On, off, on, off. So what does that tell you? That tells you that the PCM is doing what it's supposed to do. It's sending out a signal, but the signal's not going from there to the fuse box where the relay sits. So looking here, there's no split in this wire, and I already did look on other diagrams just to make sure, because usually you would see that it splits somewhere, goes somewhere else possibly, or something else is tied into it. I don't see that. So that tells me I got a broken wire from there to here. Where is it? I don't know. I gotta start taking stuff apart and find out. I got a funny feeling there's probably a broken wire underneath this fuse box. Just a guess, but I'm gonna start there and see what I find. So I took the battery box out, I moved the air box or the battery out, and I moved the air box over, and immediately I saw something. I saw a discolored wire, and I pulled on it, and it broke. And it happens to be green, the same color as the wire that's the feed for to trip the relay. So here, I just pulled this insulation up, and I saw this is kind of discolored. And all I did was yank on it, and it broke. So I don't see any other wires affected in this area. So did something hit it at one point in time? I mean, somebody's been in here. Somebody had zip tied this thing down in place and somebody ran, whoops, sorry. Somebody zip tied this thing down in place here, down to here. You can still see remnants of the zip tie and it just fell. Um, plus they ran this really cool stuff for an amp. Why, who knows? Um, and he did a nice job mounting it and using whatever that stuff is, uh, flex seal tape because this is some sticky stuff. Anyway, so I'm going to fix this wire here. I'm going to fix this, and then we're going to lay the battery back in place. I'm going to lay everything back in place. I'm pretty confident that's it. But I'm going to fix that, and then uh, let's see if the fans actually work afterwards. All right, so I trimmed back the wire, and if you look, it's got corrosion on it. Right there. So something had to cut through this thing, through the insulation. So I'm gonna have to trim this back a bit. But I think it should be, hopefully it's long enough. Oops, let's back out. Sorry, I keep forgetting I'm doing this. Hopefully it's long enough since I untwirled it because it was wrapped around this one. So, all right, let me trim that back and see if I can't fix this. So here we go. I did trim it back. I found a really good spot there. So I have one of my non-insulated buck connectors on there, as you see. And that's going to be a perfectly good repair. I have some heat shrink I'm going to stick over top. And I'm going to shrink that down. I'll show you that when I'm done. And then we're going to assemble this back together. And then we're going to try it again. And then hopefully we have a fan, which I think we will. All right, so I finished that up. As you see, I have heat shrink on there now. And if you look closely, you'll see it's a kind with glue in it. So it's a nice, good repair. I'm very happy with that. So now I'm just gonna wrap this insulation back around it, put everything back together, and then we're gonna try these fans, see if they work. All right, it's all back together. Got the relay back in place. And I did notice too, besides a new fan, somebody else put in a new um, coolant temperature sensor. So they were just throwing parts at this thing. All right, so with that all set, I got this up and running again. So let's get this to on. That's it. Broken wire, that's all it was. So. Yay, it's fixed. <clears throat> I'm happy about that. So uh, let me just fix that connector for the PCM, get that all back together. I just got to basically put the cover back on it, put the cover back on the fuse panel here, and it's done. I go back to the customer. I'm sure they're going to be happy. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. Hopefully you got something out of that. Hopefully you learned something. All right, guys. Uh, again, thank you for watching. Um, Hope you got something out of that. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. I kind of have a routine, and sometimes I throw myself off when I say it's slightly different. Um, anyway, hope you had a great day. Keep wrenching.